Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for being here at the uh, June 23rd meeting of the Revitalization Trust Fund Committee. Um, we are meeting remotely. Uh, this meeting is being, uh, being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, the order allows public bodies to meet, entire, meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded and that people can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. And uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care of not to share your screen or your computer or anything that you would not like to broadcast and or have captured by the All right. So, first of all, thank you guys for all being here. Um, we've got a bunch of new things that uh, to talk about. And, uh, why don't we start off by an update for, from the uh, from lead, into the, lead into the world dedication. <laughs> yeah. I've been talking all day long, so I was <laughs> I'm like, you got it right. <laughs> no. All right, so uh, about the dedication. Um, first of all, I'll just say it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it does, it really yeah. does. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there was a, a great uh, group. We had I think about twenty people who were uh, who were there. Of course, the Heffernan family is uh, you know is a gang in themselves, so uh, they were a lot of the attendees. But we had other people um, from other organizations, and uh, um, it was uh, Charlie Nanda was there. Uh, we had maybe uh, uh, the select board uh, member was there, and. Uh, we had people from uh, uh, Soma, uh, which is one of the local businesses, and I mean, it just we had a, a whole group of uh, of really great people, and uh, and a good discussion. So basically, uh, the the really fun thing um, was to be able to just have the uh, uh, the reaction of uh, the Heffernan family and and uh, talk about you know Mike and what a you know. What a contribution he's been, he's been to the family, and uh, and certainly you know I talked about uh, all the things that uh, you know basically started off the Revitalization Trust Fund uh, with uh, Mike's my, uh, family being the first sponsors. So and the once upon a time sculpture that came from uh, One of the things that also really cool that happened was that uh, two people who were there, um, Roy Heffernan. Dr. James from, from uh, Soma, uh, both put up their hand and said they wanted to be able to sponsor a profile. Nice. Yeah, so it was, it was great. So we've got two profiles. I also have another uh, business in town that had spoken to me about wanting to be able to also be a sponsor. So potentially we have three uh, that we can uh, uh, get into line, and which means, you know, as long as, as soon as I get the, um, you know, the commitment from them, that uh, we can change the profile quarter instead of having to wait for the six months. So that means that we could have a, we have a, potentially have another profile that would come up, uh, which would be the uh, Bob Larson um, profile in um, September. So uh, another, just a side note that, that uh, we're working on being able to get a connection to the QR code that's on uh, Sunita's uh, at a nice, uh, conversation interaction with with her. Um, we were talking about wanting to do a uh, little updated video that would uh, connect, you know, her time in Needham and then some of the things that she's done uh, out in the world. Um, but uh, you know, she, um, you know, she, one of the great things about about her, aside from all the incredible accomplishments, and she just just actually been chosen as commander uh, for the new uh, Starlink. Um, uh, Boeing project that uh, uh, she really feels uncomfortable about 
really talking about herself and sort of, you know, calling her own, uh, you know, accolades out to, to other people. She really prefers it if people want to do that kind of thing to just, uh, you know, do it uh, themselves and not, and not her. Right. So one of the things that was talked about at the, at the meeting, though, was that, that apparently on Saturday, there was a whole profile that was done on Samia that was broadcast on one of the news channels. And so when I was uh, connecting with, uh, with Sunita, I said, uh, I said, well, you know, this, this is going to work out just fine because this profile that just ran on you um, from yesterday was, uh, uh, you know, was, was out on one of the news channels. And we're going to see if we can track that down and then link to that. So oh, that's perfect. That other people, <laughs> you know, uh, sing your phrases that way. And she was, she was very happy about that. So I told her when, once I've got that connected up, um, you know, if we could find that link that uh, that I would let her know, and, and we pick it from there. So that's uh, that's where we're at. It's sort of an exciting time. It's, it's up and running, and, and uh, you know, uh, we have potentially up to three uh, sponsorships uh, in the wind. And I would say from there, maybe the best thing to do is to uh, segue to Jessica talk about upcoming things. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I'm, I'm in the car. <laughs> um, I couldn't okay. avoid it. So I'm trying to do this on my cell phone. If I'm hard to hear, just tell me and I'll, um, I'll try again when I get home. I should be home in about 10 minutes. You're good. Uh, Sounds good. You can hear me? Okay. All right, good. Um, so I, I sent around a draft um, of um, Tiger, our Needamite, who is a jazz trumpeter. Um, very interesting person with a very interesting background. It was actually kind of hard to limit the size of the, uh, of the little bio because he's done so many interesting things. Um, so that, that was a really interesting person to learn more about. Um, you know, I tried to put together the bio. I think it's still a little long um, and I would love to have someone edit it just for the usual sort of grammar and you know if there are any ways to kind of tighten up the language you know I'd love to hear it I like to be edited so um, I'd love to have someone edit it and then I'm assuming we'll actually have the people who are being profiled review the bio before we you know put it in the mural just in case I'm wrong about something I tried to be really careful about fact checking but um, if I'm wrong about something or if there's something he would rather not have plastered in the, in the center of Needham I would want him to have a chance to to speak up about that so um I don't know, Paul, if that's something, you know, if you should contact him first as the chair, or do you want me to do it? Um, I, I don't know if you have a protocol in mind for that. Well, I think um, um, once, you know, once we've sort of zeroed in on the, on the person and, and uh, put together a, a, you know, a profile that would be, uh, you know, worthy of being able to send to them and, you know, and to, uh, to review, um, I, I'm happy to, you know, to reach out to them and, and, and call them. Um, I think that's probably uh, probably the, uh, a good plan. Uh, to that okay. Contact and, and okay, great. Um, we, and I'd like, you know, over time, I'd like to develop sort of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sort of a, a standard for, you know, like an approximate word count and that kind of thing, just so I, mean, I get, I guess we want them to all look kind of similar in terms of, um, you know, the physical appearance. And that would be easier if, if we had like a word count in mind or something like that. So um, anyway, so I, I thought about that as well. Um, but anyway, I will, um, I will give that another pass. And if anyone is, you know, interested and, and wants to, to edit, please feel free. If you have any rec recommendations or any suggestions, please let me know. Um, I think I mentioned in the email, the next two people I've picked to profile are um, Charlie Baker, who's about to step down as governor. Um, he lived in Needham for quite a while and is a graduate of Needham High School. So that's an interesting uh, person to profile. And then um, Frank Malzone, who actually used to live across the street from me. So I'm a little bit partial. He's a very nice man. Um, he was a third baseman for the Red Sox and um, a gold glove winner three times, I think. Um, and very well loved by the team. He's in the Red Sox Hall of Fame, et cetera. Um, so, you know, those are both interesting people to profile, I think. And with all of those in mind,
find, you know, we've sort of have someone from the worlds of space exploration and visual art and music and gov government and sports, which is kind of a good, um, I think a broad variety of, um, you know, worlds that, that are people that are profiled come from. So um, that's sort of where I'm at now. I'm gonna try to get the drafts of uh, Governor Baker and Mr. Um, Malzone as done as quickly as possible, hopefully in the next week or so, and I'll circulate those as well. Um, but that's where I'm at. And the next big step I also need to do is find images that will look good on a mural um, of the size that we're using. Um, that's a little more challenging, I think. I mean, I can find what I can find on the internet, but I don't know that the quality is necessarily going to be up to up to snuff, I have to sort of work on that a little. So if anyone has any recommendations as to how to do that or how you found a good image or, or a few good images of Sunita Williams, um, I'd love to hear that too. So that's where I'm at. Sure, no, that's great. Um, uh, a couple of things. One, as far as finding images go, <clears throat> what has happened, what we normally have done in the process now is, is if you, uh, um, you know, find the images that you think would be appropriate, <clears throat> then we look to see if we can find the uh, high res versions of them in um, Getty Images and places like that. Part of what we build in to the graphic arts development um, is a portion of money to be able to pay for uh, the fees for those high res photographs. So, you know, if you can come up with, um, you know, a collection of photos that you think might really be representative of different key elements of, of their life. Uh, and contributions, um, then we then, uh, we give those to um, Seymour Levy uh, to work on. He'll go and see if he can find those photos or something that's very similar. So okay. that's so that's one of them. the second thing just to mention is that um, one of the uh, uh, the people who was at the uh, at the uh, dedication on Sunday uh, just happens to be. One of the people who is uh, an employee of Life is Good. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> one of, he's one of the partners. Yeah. So uh, um, he uh, said he would love to be able to sponsor a profile uh, on behalf of Burton John, of uh, the employees of Life is Good, basically. Okay, um, great. So um, if we could, you know, it would seem opportune to be able to see if um, we could start to do research on them um, yep. and, uh, and put together a profile for them. The, uh, I've told them basically that, you know, I would speak with the committee and that, uh, you know, we would uh, figure out what the sequence would be in terms of when they might show up, um, but that we knew that we, they were certainly going to be profiled. <laughs> so, um, okay. so you, know, you tell me when you, you know, uh, can put together a profile for it, and then we'll just figure out what the sequence of events is. You know, okay, be. great. All right. Um, Sounds so let's see. I think anything else uh, you would ask while we were doing it? So I think we got that. Oh, well, yeah, oh, yes, along with the drafts. Um, so what you can use as a model, uh, if you can, is the, the word count for um, Sunitas, because that box is basically the size box that we have built into the template, just, uh, just to, to recap, that the background image with the, with the world in the background um, and that box, and then the uh -huh. way the sponsorship and so on is, is laid out across the bottom of the, of the framework. And then the, the large large picture of the individual to the right, just to the left of where that gold box is, that's, mm -hmm. that is the framework, that is the template so that everything else goes on to. Okay. So, so if you use the, the word count from uh, Sunita's, uh, that would put you in the ballpark. Okay, great. Sounds good, thank you. Great. That's all I have, I think. Yeah, and, uh, and great work pulling these together. And, and, and you know, Tigers, obviously, I'm psyched to see what, you ought to be able to come up with some pretty cool photos. Oh, yeah. That. Well, I love them. <laughs> I love the black and white that I attached to the uh, to the draft itself. That was it's a really beautiful image. So I'm hoping we can find a, a high quality version of that one because it's really nice holding sure. the trumpet. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great. And I know that um, 
you had circulated it to the committee so people had a chance to, if they've had a chance to be able to read it, um, you know, it's, it's a really neat story. All right. All right. So let's um, move on to updates on the banner, uh, banners and the wall applique. Um, we basically revamped the picture, the image of the wall for the wall for the art gallery um, to very closely reflect exactly how the finished product would look. Um, we've had uh, original um, version. Uh, had brick at the top, and then uh, you know we've done some concept versions as we went along uh, that, that created more painted area. Um, but we felt that if, you know going back to what we originally uh, had done um, was going to be not only um, you know a better layout, but also uh, to be it also allows us to be able to take advantage of the fact that it is a brick wall. It's you know it's, it's right in the middle of town, and the uh, it cuts down the amount of area that needs to be painted. So in minimizing that allows us to be able to minimize maintenance. And obviously this is a long-term project. So uh, we want to be able to have, uh, you know, to build as much as we can into it. So that it requires the least amount of physical maintenance. Uh, so right now, um, uh, Seymour is working on, on uh, uh, basically modifying that image to get it into both the uh, banner for for um, for Eaton Square Plaza uh, and the application for the wall stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm expecting probably by middle to end of next week that that will be done. And then we can uh, look at being able to produce, uh, we'll get the pricing on what the producing those two pieces will be. We only need only three banners for, um, uh, for Eaton Square Plaza. So the cost is very low, um, and uh, then with the cost of the applicant, the uh, input on it. So that's that's basically the update on that piece. Um, Paul, has the scope of work changed since you and I were there last time for the repointing and the the repairs that need to be done to that brick wall? Uh, no, no. Okay. Basically, the wall, yeah, the wall still just needs to be fixed. Anyway. All right. And, uh, you know, and, and then the section that looks like there was a window that could taken out and, and re bricked in uh, that they, you know, the uh, mortar and so on would need to be uh, cleaned up and fixed so that it stays integrated. Um, cause, so we don't have anything visual on the wall that's actually distracting from the focus on it. Right. All right. I'll circle back and, and, and get back to him on those numbers um, just so we have that on, the, you know, for the budget moving forward. Yeah, because I think, you know, what, what, revisiting, uh, all, I'm really trying to be able to focus on revisiting all the budget numbers for this um, to see if the, if the way it's configured now um, we're, and the, the, just, you know, the, being able, since we've used one of these frames now for the, uh, from the to, the to the world, and the intention was to be able to transfer that into being able to use that uh, for the, the art gallery. Um, that we may um, be able to significantly reduce the overall cost of the project, and you know, the more we can, the more affordable we can do that by you know still retaining all this, the standards of high quality and so on. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if just materials that we're using um, can be you know can be put in in a way where where we get all the things we want from it, but it costs a lot less money, then that's that's great, and that also helps us be able to rally sponsors. So you're thinking of getting for the actual art, like a screen print, vinyl banner, same type of thing, and then, and then put it in? Well, actually on this one, what um, the uh, graphics people have, have uh, put together is a, um, there's a rigid, like a thin uh, PVC board yeah. that they then laminate the, um, a vinyl overlay. On it. And so it has a you know, firm, rigid appearance. Yep. And uh, it's literally a panel that can be inserted and removed. And it actually sits, instead of the way that um, uh, the banner uh, on the uh, Reading Center Fine Wines works, where it actually has a, a tack strip on the outside and, and it attaches there and then the frame locks in on, on the banner. That <clears throat> what happens in this one, in, in the, it's the same frame, 
but you can use it two ways. And the other way that you do is you size this rigid board to actually fit within the recess of the of the frame itself. Yep. So the, the top locks down to it just the same way, um, but you're working with a you know a, a, a fixed rigid panel. Right. For it. And, and because of the size, you know, we're doing it three feet by five feet uh, for these frames, uh, both horizontal and, and uh, vertical. That it, it gives it, it gives us more of an art gallery painting kind of look. Um, yep. Depending on what kind of light we're putting up. So yeah, that's that's it. We also also made a modification um, in the new design. We had a uh, sort of a sculpture artist's palette that was being designed for the upper side, that is to the, uh, over the window, basically, of the ice bar. And um, what we've done in the new design is actually integrated it into the panel. So, uh, so that should also make it easier. Um, you know, we may do it with a raised uh, piece that would attach to the wall, but it's, it, it's less complicated, but it's, it's got a very simple, but very attractive look to it. And it has, it's what has the quote that um, is incorporated. So we've been making little tweaks to be able to, you know, to really see how we can get this to be much more easily reproducible um, and, uh, and still have the, you know, very attractive effect. Maybe you could share that rendering at some point when it's finished, just so oh. visually we can have a, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll, in fact, once the, the new version of the banner, um, the, the new image is inserted into the banner, because everything else in the banner stays exactly the same. Um, just the wall itself in the background. That uh, um, you'll get a copy of, of both of those things. Uh, they will send out to you know to the community so you can all see them. That way, you'll be able to see exactly. What you're cool. Yeah. Any other questions on the the meeting of the world? Okay. Yeah, this um, uh, the uh, the T-Mobile. Uh, process. One of the things that's really been sort of onerous about this is the fact that they have very, uh, very specific now parameters for what you can do, um, and you have to, um, and you have to get uh, recommendation letters written from four or five different different people, and the recommendations have to speak to the specific criteria that they're looking for in in the thing, and you know that's. That's a lot of work and it's a lot, a lot of lot to ask of other people to do. So, you know, we'll continue to be able to um, see what we can do about being able to apply for that grant. Um, but one of the things that um, um, when Marcus was uh, saying that he had to, he has to do babysitting for him, and so he couldn't make a meeting. But he did write in saying he thought that probably the best thing was to continue uh, doing what we uh, have done in the past, which is basically soliciting. Um, you know, donors from the from the community itself and uh, local businesses to be able to do the sponsorships and to see if we you know put together something more more formalized uh, than just a word of mouth program to be able to do that so that we would all be able to go out and uh, basically act as ambassadors to be able to uh, raise money for the different projects uh, as a group. What uh, what are your thoughts in terms? <laughs> well, Paul, I just, I have a thought. I, I don't know that it's, I mean, I don't think it's too big of an ask to um, reach out to supporters. If you provide a template of a letter that touches upon all of the important points, and of course, you know, we don't want to submit five letters that are going to be identical, but I mean, if at least if it's, if they're tweaked a little bit, it, it's pretty yeah. standard. Um in that, you know, like even state grants, for example, you have to have letters of endorsement from, you know, town leadership. And a lot of the letters pretty much use the same language. So I, I don't think that, I don't think we should be hesitant to ask anybody to sign a letter if we can give them a template. Um, and, and they're just, if, if, it's, if it's not a lot of heavy lifting on their part and it's a matter of them just tweaking it, um, the great work this committee does, I'm sure there'd be plenty of people lined up that would be happy to endorse. 
the application. Just my yep. two cents. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree. And so I guess we're, what, what we're gonna, I'm gonna work on with Marcus is basically just getting that template. And, uh, and we're actually gonna talk um, next week and, uh, and see what we can do to be able to, to get that piece formalized so we can have a piece that we can literally just send out to people and say, hey, you know, would you uh, be interested in doing this particular, uh, this particular thing? Any thoughts from anyone else? Okay. Yeah. Uh, a rousing level of silence. So we'll. <laughs> so let's see. Um, uh, update on the NFA. Uh, one of the things that, that I did is contact. Um, uh, as I mentioned, it was going to contact the NFA, which I've done, um, and work through a couple of different departments, and we've gotten to the uh, the licensing department, and uh, they basically gave me a uh, outline uh, parameters to be able to put together that they that they would want to see. Um, they said that the license, if we were going to basically just you know ask them for um, artwork that could be displayed there, that they would uh, they would certainly consider. Uh, being able to do that and so basically once we uh, are a little bit further down the road uh, that uh, they have a program they estimated that the to be able to license individual pieces of art just depending on how long they would uh, be up um, is probably in the range of about fifty dollars so the cost is, is quite low and we could certainly get uh, someone to sponsor you know a set of plans for by putting the cost together for doing it. It's not just the cost of the license and the rest, it's the cost of production <laughs> to, to create it. Um, but uh, but that's, that was definitely uh, encouraging in terms of the uh, uh, cost to do that. And you know, my thought is that if we, if we uh, start to develop this relationship with them uh, through even the licensing thing, that uh, you know, if we, uh, when we have a show, that we the first, get off you know, the first show uh, to be able to do that. Uh, first MFA uh, type show, because we'll have a show that um, can mobilize. But that uh, then we you know send them pictures of it, we send, you know, we, we talk about it, uh, give them feedback in terms of what the reaction has been from the community, and you know, just see where the relationship with them can develop. Because, you know, they have obviously enormous resources to be able to share. And I think it would be, uh, you know, just a really wonderful thing to be able to have so much variety uh, in art uh, changing over periodically. In, in the We've got artists in, you know, throughout the town that can contribute those. Uh, we've got the high school we talked about in terms of being able to have a show and with the artists from that uh, program that they, do, they run. Uh, and then, you know, from anywhere else in the world. It could be art from, you know, from five different countries. It could be one show. So, you know, there's, all that stuff is, is uh, something that we can create as we go. And the first, obviously the first step is to actually get this funded so we can have something to work with um, and set up the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, curation committee um, as basically a, a subcommittee of the, uh, the revitalization process, be able to manage, you know, submission. So that's pretty much where we're at with that. Um, the newsletter. Um, Mary Ruth has sent me uh, uh, contact that she uh, content that she has put together uh, for the uh, uh, for a kickoff newsletter, and I'm in the process of actually getting it embedded into the. Uh, the uh, contact um, system to be able to uh, get it formatted and then prepare it basically to be ready to, to, be, to go. And then we can load in. I've got uh, uh, some, I've got a number of the email list, uh, email uh, addresses already put in, um, but I've got a lot more uh, to be able to get in there. And so we'll just, I'll just keep adding to that database so that we can get, uh, get this uh, launched. 
obviously, it looks like realistically, if we're going to launch a newsletter, um, the question is, do we try to push to be able to get it to launch, say, during August uh, or September? And what are your thoughts about actually launching a newsletter in the most effective? Where does it go out? Is it is it on the website? Is it in pa is it paper? Is it new? How is it distributed? It's, it's a direct email. It's it's basically going out to the to the email addresses of the people that um, have donated to the fund. Yeah. Initially, okay. um, and then uh, in addition to that, uh, Mary Ruth will also add links uh, through some of the contacts that she has to be able to distribute in those other ways. And copies of it, you know, can also go to, um, you know, the chamber to see if there's anything that they wanted to be able to include from it. And, you know, I'm, you know the town obviously is another source uh, to be able to distribute it to you. So, you know, I think we've got a variety of different places between meet MMA, the town, uh, the chamber, and, uh, you know, and, and, and the direct email uh, to be able to get the information out there. And I also the, the thing we'll do too is as part of the program is, is make it so that that within every letter it talks about um, being able to you know share this with other people so that um, we can get also you know a lot of the other organizations in town to get onto the newsletter list so that they can get it as we, as we publish. So and that you know part of that is being able to get the channel to uh, be able to talk about the new projects. Um, talk about what you know projects uh, do and, and where they are and the cost and, and those types of things to be able to uh, you know to get a whole lot more people exposed to the fact that these projects are available. Right? Any other thoughts in terms of her her initial um, thought was to be able to introduce the committee in a portion of the letter. Um, and then uh, maybe include uh, the sort of the intro video that we have actually on the fund website uh, as sort of the introduction to what the fund does. Since you know a lot of the people may have donated, but they may, you know they might have donated a while ago, uh, and also giving people who are already uh, you know sort of on board in terms of liking what we do um, a much broader perspective on you know, the projects that we we completed, as well as telling them about new projects. So for the uh, for the initial newsletter, what do you what, what would you uh, you know consider things that would really make it engaging for you if it were to come to you for the first time? I think those sounds like good ideas. I think the, the key to um, a successful newsletter. I I, re I wrote one for you know uh, over a dozen years um, when I was running uh, the nonprofit in Dedham is is to not make it too long and to have good visuals and if whenever possible linking to um, other information so and if there's information uh, there's not currently profiles on each of the committee members on the town's website so I understand that but it, you know making them sort of short and sweet I hate to say it but people's t attention spans are so limited these days, um, but whatever, you know, if there's things that can be put on the town's website, I'm certainly happy to update any of the um, project listings there. But, you know, rather than including the sponsorship information, just tease it and then have a link back to the, the town's website, uh, because anybody that's going to open up a newsletter and see a ton of text is, is their eyes are going to glaze over and they're not going to read it. So, so just keeping it short and sweet with teasers and links to um, the information if, if they want more. That's just, those are just sort of my quick thoughts. Okay. And one of the things that, um, so I know being able to sort of quickly update and modify things on the website is not really how that works, at least in the past, we didn't do the new I, I so I, I have control over the content so send it to me and I'll get it done within 24 hours okay that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I can actually include um, I can put a number of the videos here and uh, and link them into a uh, system that I have, which will also automatically capture. 
so that when people are walking, looking at it on the phone, they can just read the one page. <clears throat> Since uh, I guess about almost 70 plus percent of people who uh, watch a video on their phone uh, have to do it without sound. So uh, <laughs> without captioning, they probably aren't going to get much from my stuff other than see things we found. Paul, so, can you turn your microphone up a little bit? I'm having trouble yeah. hearing a little bit. Sure. I'm catching. That better? I'm not catching full sentences. Yeah, it is. I think it was just a little muffled before. Okay, sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah. So what, what I was saying was that you basically want to be able to. Um, I have a, a product that can uh, that when I put the videos into it, it automatically creates the uh, closed caption. You know, the caption across the bottom, uh, not closed caption, but just, you know, the caption, um, so that so that people can always. Uh, read what's being said uh, since most uh, two thirds of the people who basically watch videos on their phones um, do it without the sound on. So, uh, at least that's the statistic that I've read in several times. Uh, so, the uh, uh, so I, I will I will start to put stuff together, I will start to feed it over to Amy. <laughs> And we'll get things updated on it. I think the profiles and things like that are, are really probably best suited just to be on the be on the website uh, rather than actually in the newsletter. And we could have a you know a, a, maybe a picture of the committee, and then you could link you know to the uh, uh, you know to the website to be able to get more information if you want to be able to go into that. Right, and once they're on the website, they start clicking around and finding out more information, whatever. Yeah. Well, as far as timing, did you say that she was looking at either August or September? Say that again? As far as timing for the first issue, did she? Did you say that she was looking at either August or September? Well, I was asking the committee what, oh. what we think we want to do. Because, I mean, right now, everybody's basically going into exits. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, in uh, July, uh, our committee and a whole variety of other ones don't even meet. Yeah. So, you know, if we're trying to reach the, the audience, you know, do we roll it out as a September push um, or do we start it in August and roll it out? But people might still be on vacation, but we still look at this. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I think that the vacationers, we'd be wiser to do after Labor Day. I, I would agree. Okay. September. I agree too. I think people aren't really focused on anything in August, <laughs> in my experience. Yeah. It's mostly yeah, a lot of emails being deleted in July and August, <laughs> not ready. <right. laughs> <laughs> up them. Yeah. All right. So oh, how, how, has she decided how frequently the newsletter should be published? Well, what uh, we've talked about basically is uh, she would, she would publish it. Um, she was saying quarterly. Uh, if I would think that when we roll it out, we want to be more frequent than that because we want to get people engaged in, you know, in what's what we're doing. So, um, you know, we basically it's all about content. If yeah. we put together enough content, to, you know, within a thirty-day period, do it once a month, and we can, you know, we can be in touch once a month. And I think most people wouldn't expect to hear from us more than once a month. Mm -hmm. For the type of things we do, um, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, the only thing I was going to say is just to be careful not to overcommit because I've been involved in situations like this where, oh, yeah. you know, people get excited to do something really frequently and then it's hard to keep up with it, hard that's to keep right. up with content. So content creation is everything, and that and that's basically what um, we'd be looking to do is to map out what the content would be for say if, if it were monthly. Uh, for the next 12 months, build all the content in and basically and just let it roll out. Because if you, if you batch create, then you can do things like that. Um, but you're absolutely right. If, you, if every month you're trying to figure out what are you going to do next, it is not a winning formula. <laughs> yeah. So that's, so we'll look at September. Um, what do you think about frequency? I mean, what do you think would be a uh, something that you would expect would, would be engaging enough so that you remember who we were after the first one, if you even saw it? Because um, remember, most people 
you know, are going to go through their email box. They might not see the first one, the second one, or the third one. Right. Until one time they go, hey, this looks kind of interesting. And they, they click. I, I feel that it needs Hopefully it could be monthly, but if it can't, I don't. I think every other month uh, would be as much as necessary. I think we're at a good point where not having the newspapers, uh, we can have things. Uh, you know, you can't put things in there to our local very often to even the other one that's not located here in Needham. I mean, Hometown Weekly. The what? Uh, hometown Weekly is the only place to post the Hometown Weekly. <clears throat> and it's great that they deliver it to people's mailboxes, but exactly. obviously we don't know how long that's going to last. Right. Either, so. Yeah, I think 45 days, 60 days, that sounds reasonable, right? Not too long, but not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. As long as we have the content. Well, that's why I said I think putting together the content in batch. <clears throat> I mean, we have enough things to be able to go on. Yeah. And, if, and if, you know, and it's not going to be a big deal if, if we have created a, um, you know, a newsletter for a project that we're looking to fund, it gets funded. We can just make edit, you know, just edit it and say, hey, it's been funded. <laughs> right. That's also a good update showing people, hey, these, these projects are getting funded regularly. So, um, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And also, um, you know, it's great to be able to think of, and, and if, you know, you guys would think about this. Um, what are ways that, uh, that, that are sort of key elements that if people saw them in every newsletter, it would give them the feeling that there's, that there's a lot of momentum there? You know, what are the kinds of things that would be like, oh, well, that's interesting. Oh, I didn't realize they were doing that. Oh, they did that one. You know, I mean, those kind of uh, things that we could, you know, seed into these that allow people to, to just find at least uh, one or two really interesting things or yeah. unusual things in the letter. So they would be interested in opening it the next time it comes around. I think Amy's point to having links and having pictures is, is key, right? A little bit of a blur, click, look at the picture. Um, maybe they recognize it from around town already or you know, just something that sort of triggers that. Um, it's probably important. To, um, I don't know, so, uh, uh, we had one suggestion uh, a while ago about uh, um, sort of kept keeping a sort of did you know kind of question that would show up in each new Or, you know, I know that um, uh, the uh, history uh, does uh, that kind of thing for some of the stuff. But, Any thoughts on that or other other ideas along that line just that people engage? I think it did you know is is helpful because it, it could change every every month as far or every time every issue as far as just like a little snippet like did you know that the circle of peace statue was created in such and such a date, you know in place. I mean, just sort of like, again, you're, you're relaying information about projects um, that the NCRTF has done, or did you know 100% of your contribution goes directly to our projects? We're an all-volunteer run committee. That, that sort of thing, just like little, you know, snippets of information that, that people can easily digest. I like that. I agree with all of that. And I'm, I'm curious, um, I don't know, have you, um, Paul, has, have some of the projects ever been sort of professionally photographed? I mean, I'll bet like a 
someone with a really good eye or a really good photographer could get some really beautiful shots, you know, of the statues in particular. Um, and, you know, that could be a nice visual draw, but I don't know if that's been done already. If you have something um, already, you know, tucked away that you can use, or maybe sure. uh, it's not too expensive. Maybe somebody could, you know, just when it's a really, you know, beautiful time of day or in the fall when the leaves have changed or something like that. Yeah, we have, we actually have um, uh, a number of good shots, uh, circle of peace, uh, that's about time, uh, those types of things. Um, I've taken uh, a lot of different photos from different angles, different you know, light and, and so on. Um, with the circle of peace, um, and actually once upon a time sculpture that um, I've seen them on coasters. Uh, I've seen them on, on uh, you know, little wall hangings. Um, there's been a whole variety of, you know, sort of, you know, items like that, that are sold in places that, you know, feature medium. Oh, great. And the other thing I mentioned is, um, you know, that, and, Mary Ruth may already have this in mind, but the town website on Facebook, I think that gets a lot of eyeballs. Um, so, you know, if you posted a really striking photo, I think, and then had a link to the newsletter, um, I think a lot of people would look at that. Um, I, think that would, I think that would capture attention. Maybe also something like a coming soon or just sort of like a sneak peek at some stuff that we we have in the works. Maybe showing some stuff that we've done and then what we have in the pipeline. It may also engage some people to find out more. Yeah, and one of the things that we can make a lot more use of um, is the 14-part uh, the uh, video series called Behind the Projects. Mm -hmm. We could basically include one of, uh, one of those in every newsletter for the next year. <laughs> yeah. um, even if we were doing a month, right. just to be able to get, uh, get content. So uh, we have those as a resource too. I think um, what probably a really valuable thing would be, would be to uh, sort of uh, set up a meeting to be able to brainstorm just the, the types of content that we think we really put into this. Uh, and then have those different people go out and see if they can pull that content in. Because um, one of the things that will hold up getting, getting the content is having only one person have to be responsible for just pulling in that, those different things. Um, whereas if they have a list of a variety of different things to look for, and that each of us, you know, look at, find things that they, we think would really be valuable to include in this area. You know, and ideas just you know, just like you said, Jessica, with uh, you know having pictures that are you know once upon a kind of time sculpture, the circle of peace, you know, really good photographs that uh, that can be used for these things. Um, it, it makes it makes putting the content together so much easier and faster. It, it, it doesn't feel like a burden because you feel like you're starting from zero. So, so, so how do, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say. So one of the things I was going to ask is if if we were to do a um, you know, maybe a, a 30 minute meeting to just um, among us, just as a separate thing to just brainstorm, um, <clears throat> putting together the you know, content pieces, just getting a whole variety of different ideas for the content. And then I can go back to, you know, talk over with uh, Mary Ruth about you know, what do we think we can pull together and what, what would she like to be able to, you know, to feature in this thing. I think it can, you know, speed up the, the batch creation of content. Great. What were you going to say? Really? Um, oh, it's a little bit of a side issue, so it can wait if someone has more to add about the, the newsletter. But um, I was going to show you something. I don't know if I, oh, here it is. So I don't know if this has already been attempted, but you can see there's like, this is a photograph of kids sledding um, in front of the high school, on that hill in front of the high school. Yeah. And um, I noticed it. Oops, I'll turn back around. It's a really sweet picture. And it was on, someone posted it on Facebook. Um, someone who's a photographer and just kind of got the shot and thought it was a nice um, photo. And she posted it on the Needham um, page 
on Facebook, a lot of people responded to it, said, you know, oh, I remember sledding on that hill with my kids or my grandkids. And she, it was getting so much attention that she decided to start um, sort of giving it out if people made a donation to the Needham Community Council. Um, and so I did because I really liked it so much and I just, um, I did it and then she dropped off the photo at my house and I put it in a frame and I really like it. Um, anyway, the thought occurs, I don't know if you've ever attempted something like that before, but maybe, maybe at some point that could be a similar fundraiser if we had a really beautiful, um, image of the, the circle of peace statue or, or something else. I think, you know, people might make a small donation to our, um, fund and then they would have sort of a complimentary photo they could put in a frame if they want. Um, just an idea to throw in the mix at some point. Yeah, yeah. I look for that. Great idea. <laughs> yeah, no, I and mean, then obviously it worked because you, know, you made a donation and, uh, and, and framed the picture. So. I did. I did. And you know what? I could probably find her again and ask her. But I, she it was going pretty well. I mean, she had a few, she had a few hundred dollars worth of donations at, at one point. So I'd be curious to see what the final count was. But she, I think she was pleasantly surprised at how many people participated. So, um, you know, if we had a really beautiful shot, maybe of the Circle of Peace statue, because it's really so um, everyone loves that statue. So they might like I would love to have a, a photo of it um, myself. So other people probably would, too. I think you're right. Um, that Needham Facebook page is is, is popular. Sometimes it gets a little grouchy, but <laughs> <laughs> it can go either way. But yes, it gets a lot of eyeballs. That's for sure. Yeah. And this is an example of something good that happens every once in a while. You know, an argument arises that goes the wrong way. But <laughs> but but this is an example of when it's when it's good. I think. Well, yeah. I guess the uh, the question is as far as um. As far as that goes, let me. Um, first of all, do you, do you know what, you, what did she sell them? How, how much? What was the donation? So she said, I think she said you could make donation of your choice at least, I think, ten dollars. And if you if you donated at least ten dollars, and she had a link to the Needham Community Council. I think it might have been a specific program they were doing, maybe lunches, um, you know, for kids from. Um, low-income families or, or something like that. It was a specific like school lunch thing that she was um, doing this for, but I think it was, you know, any donation, um, but the minimum I think was $10. So, um, you know, and if I can find her again, I can ask her, I can ask her what the final um, count was just out of, out of curiosity. Um, but it, a lot of people, it really struck a chord. A lot of people really liked it. Well, that's good. No, I do, and it'd be great to be able to get more of the details of what happened ultimately. You know, it may still be going on. You know, you know that would be interesting to see how how, how much money it raised, how much um, response, you know. and then we could learn from that to see if there's ways we could use ways to tweak it that might, uh, you know, might even improve on the way. Well, as far as the um, as far as the list of things that I have. I, I think we've pretty much covered. So, Andrew, since we seem to be coming right down to the wire now, <laughs> are there any other uh, uh, questions or comments or uh, you know other items that uh, anyone would like to be able to bring up? I mean, in fact, if we, if Carol will tell you that there is no meeting next month. <laughs> if we have uh, August meeting, uh, is it to be uh, where? <laughs> In other words, if they if they don't give another opening for more Zoom, which is supposed to end up July fifteenth, yeah. uh, we would be meeting uh, at one of the you know uh, town hall, one of the rooms there. Or I can, we... yeah, I can certainly reserve a room at town hall um with that without any issue at all I don't, I don't know if that you know as a committee you'll need to discuss if if being there in person um is is going to be challenged for some there are some rules with regard to hybrid meetings so there needs to be um 
and some of this is subject to change, but there needs to be, um, you know, so the chair of, of the meeting actually has to physically be present. So Paul, you, you couldn't do hybrid, but if um, th their hybrid is an option, supposedly you have to sort of, you know, and, and having town staff police this is um, a, a little bit tricky, but you're supposed to have like sort of an excused absence, if you will, if, if you're going to be hybrid, which, you know, totally understandable for, for people to do that, but it can't necessarily be a, a regular thing um, for, for you to serve on the committee, but not ever be able to be present. Again, a lot of this stuff is being flushed out. So I don't want to say that things are happening definitively one way or another, but I'll have more information um, within the next couple of weeks. And I'll certainly be in touch with you, Paul, and this will be communicated to the rest of the committee. So, um, you know, the, the goal is to have everybody be able to participate in, in a way that works for them. So I know that the select board got a lot of feedback with regard to um, the remote meeting policy and, and how that's going to work. But we, we have the ability to do hybrid meetings um, from town hall if somebody can't physically be there. So I guess that's a long way of saying things are still being flushed out and I'll be back in touch once we have a, a more definitive idea of, of what this is going to look like come July 15th. Okay. Okay, great. Well, and as far as um, as far as the target date in August, uh, now what, uh, what would be the target date for you? Do you have that for August? For August, no. I couldn't hear you. Sorry. The so date on August. August. Yeah, what would be the August date? Okay. Because we know we're shooting for no matter where we have to. <laughs> I have it here. August 20th, August 25th. Okay, all right. So now let's put that in the calendars to, to know that we can uh, do that. And uh, then we'll, in the meantime, we need to figure out <laughs> where we have to do it, how we have to do it, and uh, right. what we can do there. You know, be able to get together. Um, obviously, we've got a few weeks to be able to figure this out. So, uh, we will do that. All, All right. right. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? All right, then. Well, thank you all. Um, we will, uh, I will uh, uh, propose that we conclude the uh, June 23rd meeting of the Revitalization Trust Fund. Do I have a second? Okay, I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's unanimous. Well, thank you all. And uh, we'll, we'll be back in touch if we have any other updates in between, just, you know, just informational. Um, but otherwise, have a wonderful summer. And uh, enjoy doing everything you can to have some fun during, uh, during July <laughs> and August. Hope you have a great time with your family and, and uh, fun. So, thanks so much for your service for this, and we'll keep on rocking and uh, kick off another great program as we move uh, through the end of August and September. Great. Thank you all. Take care, guys. Have a good night.